I always felt like this was the most raw song out of all of the songs I did for Bebe. And it was the most, I always felt like it was the most minimalist of all the beats. Because, you know, give me the loop, it gets intricate on the hook. The hooks is so full. You got Biggie saying, give me the loop, give me the loop. All that stuff going on. This is just straight beat. I had the, the drums going, I had some light. Uh, stuff going on on top. The only other extra thing on top is those two um, organ notes. I said, it's really those two notes that was happening occasionally throughout the verses every now and then. But the beat was minimalist. It was It's one of the most lightest, it's light work, real raw, minimalist. That's the best way to describe it. What, what was the session like, uh, Method Man and Biggie? We had recorded, um, it was doing everything at Hit Factory. It's vague to me. We did stuff at Hit Factory sound on sound and soundtrack studio. I remember this when we did this, we didn't record in the exact same room where we always recorded at. I don't know, it might have been it might have been done at Hit Factory. But I remember that um I was there early because I had heard that meth was gonna be on the song. So I was there early and then um, later, Method Man came and big. And uh, I was born with the gap in my teeth. See? Right. I was born with a big gap in my teeth. Me, my brother LG. Shout out to my brother LG. He's a producer, too. But the gap runs in my family. Rest in peace to my father, man. Um, God rest his soul. Him. And even my mother, which is another side of the family and everything, like the gap is something big that ran and out. And when Method Man walked in, he was like, yo, what up, homie? He said, yo, you got a big ass gap. <laughs> I remember that. He had me laughing and cracking up. And he went in the studio. And the way they start passing the verses off back and forth, I said, first thing came to my mind, I said, yo, this reminds me of like EPMD. You remember how Eric and Paris used to toss the verses back and forth? Mm -hmm. I was like, yo, this reminds me of some EPMD stuff. This is clever. See, on Gimme the Loop and on Warning, Biggie was passing the verses back and forth himself using different vo verses, voices. But when he did the what he actually went for the first time went and got somebody to be on the song with him to pass the verses back and forth and also too i heard one of y'all mention i think it was you you mentioned it earlier met them yes met the man is the only one featured artist on that whole album why is that that i don't know i guess that's just the way Biggie and Puff just wanted it. And also, too, you got to understand back then, the artists of yesteryear, the hip hop artists of yesteryear, yo, know, they had superhuman strength, man. <laughs> they was recording albums all by themselves. They didn't need all the features. Occasionally, if they wanted to um, lump somebody into the mix, have a feature on there, cool. But Features was not necessary back in the day. Today, people can't do an album without features. I think Jay Jay Z's first album, he had Mary, he had Biggie on on his album. He also mm -hmm. he had 
Yeah, it's, it's yeah, someone it's else. Some money. Yeah. There might, there might be some out there today, but I don't know of them. Whether it's in the comments or vocally here, I want somebody to name one album today that's out, solely done by the artist and does not contain any features. Name one album that don't got no features. The last Cold, one I probably the only one. Is it good? Yes. Yeah. J. Cole, the only one where I take yeah. a... And that's rare. Mm -hmm. That's rare. The average um, artist today, they can't hold an album down by themselves. They ain't got the strength. So we got to give it to Biggie when he did that. And the only feature was um, Method Man. Most of these people, before they even go into the studio, most of these artists, before they even go into the studio, before the beats is even done, they're like, yup, I'm going to get Jada Kiss. I'm going to get blah, blah, blah. And they, they got the, the featured artists already lined up. You ain't even made the beats. The song ain't even been yeah. That's the way people envision albums today. It's from the features. And basically, if you want to say that, who going to help me do this? Somebody in the comments just put up Illmatic 2. Yes, salute to Nas back then also too. For and what on um the only feature on his album back then, what was um A Z, right? On Life's a Bitch, right? Right? Hey, on, uh on on the old Mac, yeah, I believe so. The first one, yeah. With A Z or Life's a Bitch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Someone someone put key tip, I believe, as well. I'm telling you, man, and if and if I'm and if I'm saying anything wrong here, a lot of your artists out here today, I challenge you to make an album by yourself. I want to see you do it. Mm. Stop depending on all of these features, because I'm gonna be honest with you. A lot of these albums right now, if they didn't have the features on them, flop, mm. flop, <laughs> flop. Just go ahead and admit it. It was your four legs holding you up. If you did it by yourself, flop. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we enjoy the features more than we do the artists. That's true. That's true. Yeah. I, 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 when you say that, I think of a. You know, I don't want. I don't want to name the song, but anyway. But yeah, it happens. It does happen. Um, okay, it's about this particular record. Early on, when Big and Meth were going back and forth, at the end of Big, it cuts off at a certain part where he goes, don't tempt me. And then Meth comes in with the T-H-O-D. Sorry, man. sorry, sorry. I'll, I'll be right back, by the way. Go ahead. Oh, yeah. It, it cuts off and Meth comes right in and it kind of overlaps. And when I rap the verse back, it's like you got to pick and choose whose verse you're going to rap because they both overlap with the T-H-O-D man and then him saying, don't tempt me, Big. Was that uh, left in on purpose? Like um, I don't the know. overlap? I don't know. I think I think Method Man probably had a certain idea of how he wanted to start. And it was like, whatever, this is how I'm starting. This is how I'm coming in. Forget whatever he said. <laughs> okay, okay. That, that's cool. That's cool. It's, I don't know, I always thought that, like, listening to that record... But yeah, um, also, yeah, he mentioned that on Reasonable Doubt, Big was a feature. And him and uh, Jay actually went back and forth on Brooklyn's Finest. They did that. So that's uh, that's also another one of my favorite records. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so I just went for a quick toilet break, man. It's been sat here for a while. Um, okay, yeah, let's, let's move on to the next song. Okay, yeah. No... That was too much information. <laughs> All right. Um, but yeah, um, no, okay. If you want to sing, just sing, sing on mute, please. I can't handle the singing <laughs> anymore. <laughs> all right, all right. Next song. Um, uh, so, okay, you guys know the deal. This is the sample. Go from there. <laughs> 